requested. It's not very hard to get good information from the people of BC. You just have to, to listen and ask them for emails on their stories. And if you take the time and you actually care about their issues, they will send you emails. And um, you can understand a situation pretty fast. The Minister of Agriculture, I, I, have, I haven't even heard from the Minister of Agriculture on this issue. I believe he thinks it's, it, the Minister thinks it's a forestry issue only. But it's hard for me to, to see that, understand why a Minister of Agriculture wouldn't stand up and fight for um, the ranchers of British Columbia who are having such problems. Uh, I believe that it's a shared responsibility between the Minister of Forest and Lands and the Minister of Agriculture. But instead of, um, instead of trying to solve the problem with the information that I'm bringing to the government, the, uh, the Premier stands up and, and you know, has an incredible display of arrogance in this house. And the Minister of Forest and the Minister of Agriculture remain seated. And then today, the Minister of Forest and Lands Gave me, an, gave me an answer that, uh, you know, I don't think the ranchers are going to be very happy with because they were again gathered in their living rooms waiting for an answer. They thought that maybe Hello? this week would be the week that their issue was taken seriously. So I really hope that um, the Minister of Forest and Lands went back to his office and he's making the, call, making the calls that, that need to be made. So as far as the, the budget goes and my response to the budget, you know, as I said, there's been a lot of empty words. There's been a lot of uh, political rhetoric from the other side of the house. Sometimes I believe that that the other side of the house thinks that the um, the chamber, the chamber where we should have a lot of respect, respectful debate, is a campaign office. And so the announcements that come after a, a budget speech are are, are empty words. And like I said, on the ground, on the ground in the caribou. On the ground with the kids in those bug-infested apartments. The real life stories. So that's, you know, uh, with the refugees I coming in from Darfur and Sudan and, you know, Somalia and places the, like that, Iraq and Lebanon. And about today, because I have a relationship with them. I have a working relationship with them as the agriculture critic. Just as Go the rub some shoulders with them. Have, and the Minister of Forest and Lands. And I would suggest to the Minister of Forest and Lands and to the Minister of Agriculture that they get to know this file because it's, a, it's like a canary in a coal mine. This situation that's happening in the caribou is only going to be happening more and more and more over the years. We are going to see water conflicts with agriculture and every other industry in BC. And as far as I'm concerned, if we don't get this strained out now, this is where we can start to straighten it out this conversation's never going to end, and we won't have agriculture anymore in this province. Thank you very much. Thank the member and recognize the member from Peace River North. Well, thank you, uh, Honourable Speaker. Good to see you in the chair, and you're looking great over there. But uh, it gives me great pleasure to rise and take my place in the 2012 uh, budget response have a little fun with some of this stuff. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to start by saying uh, what an honor it has been serving the people of Peace River North. And I, and I say that sincerely, and I, and I believe it, and I want them to, to know that that's uh, the truth as well. It's truly, uh, it, it's a privilege to represent... Okay, so you're going to stand up there and you're going to say, well, these are the people that I serve, this is who I am, but when the other side of the house talks to me, don't talk to me, talk through the chair. But yet you're going to stand up there and say, well, I'm the man, you know, I, I, I'm going to tell you like it is, right? Because, you know, I'm here for a reason, but when it comes down to talking to me face to face, that, that's not right, you know, you got to go through the chair because at the end of the day, this dude, when the shit hits the fan and the water temperature goes up and it starts to boil, what the Liberal government is going to do is they're just going to shift his butt to another position, another ministry, so that, uh, you know, nobody will be held accountable because it's going to be an empty chair. So who is he representing if it's an empty chair once they move him to a different chair? I want to say thank you and, and certainly apologize for not giving them the time that they need to, to have for myself. 
I also want to thank the constituent, the, my constituent assistants, Gail Clark and Jennifer Wilkinson, because they do a great job. Like, are we really going to take this guy serious? That we talked about in here today, How serious should we take him? Table, we know his butt's going to be shifted off issues, in the next three months, you know, yeah, next, next, uh, 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 what do they call it, uh, you know, uh, of, just shifting each other around from position to position, you know, so till the next time they give themselves a raise. I know lots about agriculture. And I certainly work with the folks up there on lots of issues. I want to talk about... And uh, he probably does. Lindsay, you know? And, and uh, Tom Hancock. They do my research down here and, and my communications and, and keep me organized. So I certainly want to recognize... But he also has a back pocket. To recognize these people. And with a button on it. For us. But, but back to, to the member from uh, Saanich. She, she, she mentions this. She wants to go on the record. So I want to get her on the record as, as a little heckling because I like to... Have a nice, healthy little hackle back and forth, and so one of the things that I hear in my region from the cattlemen, uh, you know. You see, I can heckle all I want because I've been dubbed scandalous, I've been mocked, you know, I've been ran out of town, I've been tricked, you know, right? I've been treated like less than a child, right? You know, I've been pimped, I've been used. So for me, it doesn't really matter anymore, right? You know, I'm I'm immune to us all that hack. Right, I've got lots of scars on my body. Member stands on, on the biggest issue I hear about from the cattlemen, and that's predator control. Where do you stand on that one? That's the biggest issue that we have. The wolves out there are are taking for the cattlemen. It is absolutely the amount of the amount of the animals, the amount of the animals that the cattlemen uh, give up every year. It's costing each one of them folks anywhere. 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 a year. That's what I'd like to ask you. Where do you stand on culling? Where, where does the member from Sanit stand on culling uh, some of the wolves so we can get the cattle looked after? That? I'd like to get her a response. Fair on enough, that. but what does that do with Anyhow, the water uh, being, we'll you know, polluted and moved around and dried up? And, yeah, so you know, how does that address the water shortage, shortage out there? I'm time here just talking about some of the other issues. So, Honorable Speaker, I, I believe this is a prudent budget, <coughs> controls government spending, but still doesn't allow us to make necessary investments that are required. I think the budget's gonna, uh, it's gonna be balanced in 2013, 2014, just our legislation says, and I, I think that's great news. That's, uh, that's, that's what I wanna see. That's what uh, most of the chambers around the province have, have, have told us they wanna see, and I certainly believe that's what we should be doing. We believe on this side of the house that uh, the way to economic growth is through lower taxation. And that's something that we've done very consistently over the last 10 years. In fact, longer than that. Uh, and, and government, uh, if you don't have the resources... Lower taxation, money, more fees, bring in tolls, extra money. you know... you got to get your house in order. It's no different than a normal household where you... Cut have, back on you services. On visa card until you have uh, we have a province and, and no of rotten off. teeth because people order. aren't getting the dental care Our that they need. Um, I could probably go out with my computer and within two hours... I could probably find 20 people that would need immediate, immediate ASAP dental care in less than an hour. Okay. So, you know, when they say chattering of teeth, pretty soon there won't be no teeth to chatter with. So, for their lower taxes, they also, you know, remove basic health care needs for people to, um, you know, stay healthy, right? I can't get blood tests. You know, there's no pap test for me, right? My children haven't had blood tests in over two years. I haven't had blood tests in over two years. I can't even book an appointment with a doctor. And when I go see a doctor, they send me away. Because, you know, they, they, they want to, uh, they're looking for a special kind of patient so that they can write their prescriptions and, you know, send them in for their x-rays and, and do all this other stuff. They're not looking for radiation poisoning or, or uh, you know, handicaps in, in terms of, you know, environments that people are forced to live in or circumstances that they've had to deal with for years and years and years and years and, years and then it accumulates to the point where you're, you know, experiencing chronic depression and, you know, they're, they're, they're doctors don't want to address that they just want to send you off for an x-ray or an MRI or a CAT scan and, and, and you know give you a prescription for some oxycontin and then send you home 
and we all know that we have to protect health care and education there's no question about that but we also have to make sure that they stay sustainable same time our school district going to be sustainable is by having people fall off the grid okay and I'm witness to that because I fell off the grid I'm at the point where I don't even want to walk into a doctor's office and make an attempt to see a doctor because the last four times I've done that I've been sent away or rejected and I don't get it because the lady that lives downstairs has already used up 10 million dollars in the health care system because she's old, white, and she has a pension plan, and she knows how to play the system. There is no balance, and it's unfair. It's nowhere near what we need to have in, in health. And, you know, at some point in time, we have to make sure that we do get our curve, our, our <coughs> curve adjusted slightly so that uh, we, can, we can get things under control. If she didn't have a health uh, pension plan, she'd be up at the front room. If she didn't have us as a family with her husband, she'd be up at the front room sitting in her wheelchair, you know, breathing her last breath. She wouldn't have oxygen tanks. She wouldn't have feeding tubes. She wouldn't have a scooter. She wouldn't have the luxury of, you know, being in a hospital for a month and a half, you know, in her own room, right, or a shared room. You know, she, she I don't even I don't even think she ever spent one day in the hall, even though in the last four months she's been in the hospital, you know, half that time. Um, so, you know, you do the math tax credit up to a thousand dollars and the children's fitness credit and children's arts credits of up to 500 each each child those are all things that are going to help help the economy providing that you can afford to pay for the uh, initial the program if you can't afford to, to pay for the initial program you don't the, get the uh, tax credit so that doesn't do anything for these children living in these complexes with nothing for them to do except throw stones at each other while the parents and the rest of the adults are out there throwing stones back like really i've been there i know what it's like and that's the, you know, that's been a, a substantial uh, decrease over the last few years. We're sitting at 10 percent, and, and something that we should be very proud of. It's uh, this it's, stuff it's just boils my blood. And it's the small business owners that uh, provide the jobs that we need to to uh, keep our economy moving, and uh, we have to make sure that. Like they this can guy, he doesn't know what he got himself work. into. Honest to God. That's very important. You know, and if he did, small business tax you know, tax rate why is he uh, there, really? Uh, staying at 2.5 percent. And uh, that, that's a paycheck. Businesses have, have acknowledged. Yes, we were going to go down to zero, but they've acknowledged. You know, popularity, the fame. You know, go down in history. With, you know, bragging rights. Polis, uh, across the province, that, that's, that's certainly something that they can live with. Uh, you know, I'm an MLA. I'm a minister. Well. Wow. So we're, we're you know, I'm somebody important. That. Personal income taxes. You know, bow down, kiss my feet. That, that you know, I think needs to be uh, brought home to all of the folks out there. When you start talking about uh, families, generally have one of the lowest overall tax burdens in Canada. And the only place that's a, a little bit lower than us is Alberta on cer certain different occasions. When you include yeah, the income tax, but once taxes, these property taxes, you know, healthcare premiums, like I said, it's taxes, a province of rotten British teeth. Columbia is right there. We're the, one of the lowest in Canada, and that's where we want to be for, for our residents. So many young people right in their there. 20s have rotten teeth. BC uh, currently has the lowest provincial tax. Thirties, rotten uh, teeth. Individuals earning 120,000 a year. And again, that's that's a great stat that I'm I'm extremely happy with. Uh, uh, I think it's a, it's a stat that most folks, if they, if they it knew costs that, 180 dollars to get your teeth back, clean, just to get your teeth clean. For a filling, it's like 300 bucks. And once the teeth start rotting, then you're looking into root canals and caps and all in bridges and, you know, indentures and, you know, and, and, and yeah, you know, people are losing their teeth left, right, and the center. Well, you know, their prescriptions are, you know, they can't afford their prescriptions. They have to pay more for their pharmacare, you know, fees. $1,435 a year less in income taxes, income taxes alone. And that family of four, 70000 a year. That he makes 70000 a year, $2,158 a year less in income taxes. So we have done a good job on, on bringing income taxes in line for the province. And we couldn't say that in 2001. We were like six, seven, eight I was just informed that the goods and ser Canada. services sales no, tax, which I think is a provincial sales tax, goods and services, right? 
um, is, is being uh, applied to everything that you buy, including you food, into BC to compensate for that $320 million dollar, uh, payment plan that they've worked out with the federal government to pay back that HST transfer payment that they got when they started to introduce the HST. So they have to pay that back within five years. So they got to get that money from somewhere. So it, it looks like they might be getting it from the goods and services sales tax. Um, maybe that's why tuna has gone up to a dollar seventy a can because you know they've increased they've they, they've added that in via through the company sales tax. So I, I don't know. I just know that in in the last month two months tuna has gone up seventy cents a can. So you're looking at almost two dollars a can for a little teeny weeny teeny weeny can of tuna. And we're still not testing for radiation yet, so wait till that shit hits the fan. As soon as we find out that our food supply is getting contaminated from the radiation in the ocean, that $2 a can is going to go up to $10 a can, and not too many people are going to be able to afford that. Let's talk a little bit about affording the BC Jobs Plan. And uh, I have to say that I spent lots of time traveling around the province this summer, and I just don't understand why these people wouldn't try and help me more than what they've done. You see, that's the thing. Because it's not like I'm coming in with a malicious tent, right? Looking at new gas markets and all the time keeping our greenhouse gas 